Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 view and today we have got a new update here so this is the update 23.2 which is um, Saturn's new moon so if you uh, saw recently um, Saturn has some more moons now so it now is now the record holder for the most moons in the solar system we have 82 moons um, so it's taken over Jupiter um, now for the most moons which is um, pretty cool so you can see with 82 moons Saturn now has the most no moons surpassing Jupiter with 79 so that's actually pretty awesome and there's also some um, refreshes of the database saturn simulations with its new moons and some other improvements yeah i've looked up the uh notes for this update as well and yeah it's really just the saturn stuff honestly there's not really anything else it's just a few little minor debug stuff and fixes and things like that so there's not really too much in here but yeah there's a new simulation um i believe so yeah we, let's go straight into it to so explore the history of saturn's moons will that take us to the simulation okay it looks like it will okay so history of saturn's moons the gas giant saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system until only second d to jupiter until recently, yeah, Jupiter had the largest amount of known moons in the solar system, but in 2019, astronomers discovered the discovery of 20, 20 new moons. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? So, um, orbs in Saturn, so it's now the uh, reigning solar system champion with 82 moons. Um, yeah, to 79 at Jupiter. So, right. Oh, there's even more to read. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, this is cool. So, let's go through the full history of it. So, yeah, in 1655, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens spotted the first known moon of Saturn, which was Titan, with his telescope. Titan is the second largest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede, and has a thick, chemically rich atmosphere. So moving on. Oh, this is cool how all the simulation plays out with the, um, when, with the text here. So between 1671 and 1684, Italian astronomer Giovanni Domenico Cassini sorry if I uh, pronounced the uh, middle one there wrong, um, discovered four more moons orbiting Saturn, later named Iapetus, Rhea, Tethys, and Dione. So you have all of the larger moons um, here. So, um, yeah, later named Tethys. Okay. Um, Cassini called these four the Sideria, Locusia, and Lewis stars after his um, benefactor, King Lewis. Um, the, that's the 14th of France, okay? Had to read those nom Roman numerals there. Right, uh, all right, moving on. So, um, moving on to Herschel now. William Herschel discovered two more moons, later named Mimas and Celadus. So we're getting to the smaller of the major moons now. It was um, Herschel's son in 1857, proposed naming the first seven known moons of Saturn after the titans of Greek mythology. Yeah, that's true, that's pretty cool. And I believe um, there's a crater called Herschel on Mimas or Tethys, I think it was. I think one of them actually, one of the craters is named um, Herschel. Uh, moving on. Soon after John Herschel suggested the names of the first seven moons, William Bontanis, A or his son George, discovered an eighth moon around Saturn. Astronomer William Nassau observed the moon two days later, but beat the bonds to the publication, proposing the name Hyperion to fit Herschel's theme. Okay, so yeah, that's the first of the smaller sort of objects now. So if we uh, go here, yeah, it's one of the smaller ones. So there we go. Now moving on. Oh, Phoebe, I've heard this one before. It was the first moon of Saturn to be discovered photographically rather than yes yeah, so this is now we're getting onto the really small moons here so um yeah william henry's picking sort of the moon in 1899 so even the minor moon was spotted in 1899 which is pretty cool i didn't know that um while examining photographic plates created during observations the previous year Phoebe, i probably haven't said that right was the first known irregular moon of saturn ah, that's pretty cool um its orbit is retrograde meaning it moves around saturn in the opposite direction of the first eight moons which have prograde orbits so yeah there we go so that's retrograde, if you didn't know what it meant. Oh, there's loads of readings to this one. Wow. Okay, so in 1966, French astronomer Adomin Dolphus, yeah, I really say, sorry if I'm saying this wrong, discovered a tenth moon, which he named Janus. Three days later, Richard Walker recorded an observation of what was assumed to be the same moon for years. Astronomers struggled to explain the orbit of Janus based on the position in various photographic observations. Finally, in 1978, so we're getting closer to the modern day now, Stephen Larson and John Fountain realised that Dolphus and Walker's observations could be explained if they actually spotted two different moons on a very similar orbit. Ah, so this is in the moon, or in the rings, close to the rings of all the little particles and stuff going around with the shepherd moons. Um, could be explain if they had actually spotted two different moons, which are very similar orbit. Dolphus' moon kept the name Janus, and Walker's moon was named Epithemius. Epithemius, yeah, <laughs> very hard to pronounce some of these. In 1980, three moons were discovered using ground-based telescopes. Helene, Telesto, I've heard of Telesto before, and Calypso were known as the Trojan moons, meaning they orbit ahead of, or, orbit ahead of or behind a larger moon. Helen orbits 60 degrees ahead of the moon Dione, while Telesto and Calypso orbit 60 degrees ahead behind the moon Tethys, respectively. 
fact, moving on. The arrival of Voyager in the planetary probes at Saturn in 80 and 81 provided astronomers with a close-up view of Saturn's moons. The Voyager probes confirmed the existence of Helene, Telesto, and Calypso, and confirmed that Apophemus and Janus were two distinct moons. The Voyagers also discovered three moons. Yeah, that's right, they discovered more, um, orbiting close to Saturn. Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. Yep, I've heard all those ones before. Years on in 1990, the Voyager probes were on their way out of the solar system. Astronomer Mark Showalter discovered another small moon, Pan. Yeah, I've heard of Pan before. That's one that really comes to mind in the images recorded by Voyager 2 as it passed Saturn in 1981. Right, now moving on. Um, the turn in the millennium saw a huge increase in the number of known moons in the solar system. So yeah, side note here. These are all the ones that you can't think of the top of your head. I, all of the ones we've previously mentioned i've heard of all them before um, mostly apart from like one or two of them but they these moons further out these are the ones that you really need some brains to remember because there is so many of them obviously now and you're remembering all of these some pretty uh pretty hard stuff to do so there's just so many yeah i don't none of these ring a bell to me with um the names here um, anyways, the turn of millennium saw a huge increase in the number of moons in the solar system as large surveys were conducted using ground-based telescopes and computer analysis. One such survey announced the discovery of 12 new moons around Saturn in 2001, all with much lava or larger irregular orbits and previously known moons. Yeah, these are all the really far away ones now. So, yeah, there we go. Right. Actually, let's just take a side note here. Look how far away this moon is. I don't... Can you... You can barely even see Saturn at this distance. I mean, look, if we look over there, you can see the ring still, but look how far out we are. Um, from Saturn, you can see the rings spinning there, but yeah, pretty pretty small from this distance. So if we open the menu, for instance, and then go to the motion, so it takes 2.92 years to orbit Saturn, which is pretty insane. Look how far away it is. I mean, if we put that into uh, moon, uh, not moon, sorry, if we put that into lunar distances, 52 times further away than the moon is from Earth. And remember, you can fit all the planets in between the Earth and the moon, so that is 52 times all of the planets in a line which is uh, pretty, pretty crazy stuff at that distance right so let's go ahead and close that so in 2005 a group of astronomers using the um let's go ahead back to saturn now um using the uh, maruna key observatory announced the discovery of a dozen more distant moons around saturn so it's all of these guys meanwhile the cassini probe reached saturn 2004 oh yeah i remember cassini getting there a long way back now uh, rest in peace, Cassini, as well. But yeah, in 2004, and discovered six new moons orbiting between 2004 and 2009, including Polydunces, a, Tro a Trojan moon of Dium. Cassini also discovered the 300 meter moonlet S 209 S1 by observing the shadow it casts on Saturn's rings. There we go. And in 2006, a group of astronomers led by um, Scott Shepard announced the discovery of nine moons using the Subaru telescope. Oh, there's even more. Right, three more moons were announced in 2007. The first, Tarquek, was named after an Innut moon god. The next two, S-207 uh, S2 and 7 S3, were not seen again after 2007 and were considered lost, the term given to objects whose orbits are not measured well enough to predict um, where they might be observed again. However, S2 was recovered in the observations performed in 2019. Okay, so it's back now. Right. And in October 2019, okay, so we're to the present day now, um, Scott Shepard's group announced the discovery of an impressive 20 moons at once. Wow. Um, using the Subaru telescope, this discovery means the total number of moons at Saturn to 82, surpassing Jupiter's 79. Ah, we'll probably discover more around Jupiter at some point as well. Because uh, who knows, maybe these moons haven't been here for that long. They could have been caught cool fairly recently. Who knows? Um, five of the moons, S13, I'm just going to call them by their last two numbers. So 13, 17, 12, 7, and s3 remain lost so there's still some more so there could be another five moons so that would bring it up to um 87 so it could be 87 but they're missing still so that's um pretty cool but yeah there we go so that is the uh, whole history of the saturn's moons and all of the saturn stuff there which is um pretty cool honestly so yeah, a lot of reading there hopefully you enjoyed uh, this, uh for me um lecturing you all there but yeah there we go so that is all of the saturn uh, all of the saturn moon updates so i guess we can have a quick look at the moons to see if there's any texture updates or anything like that so for titan for instance it already has a texture but to see if there's any changes that looks the same Rhea, oh yeah i remember these guys these guys are very green in their appearance yeah i don't think they're still a little too green if you ask me but yeah here they all are there's enceladus mimus okay so they're all the same and then we have all of the dwarf moons here which is still all the same as normal okay so the textures remain the same there but yeah there we go so we can all see go into the open area so is the simulation in here somewhere if i just search saturn Saturn, maybe? Saturn and moons? Saturn with rings? I wonder if there's any way to get that um, text back up. Or maybe that's it. Does that only appear once? I don't know. So, yeah. So, all of these simulations are updated with the new moons now, um, which is quite cool. Is there any. 
Yeah, is it Saturn? I don't know. Which simulation is it? It has all of the text. That's just Saturn by itself. Yeah, I don't know if I can get that um, that simulation with that text back up or not. Honestly, I'm not sure. Is it lost forever? I'm, I really don't know. But yeah, there we go. So yeah, that does it for um, the time being with this um, update, guys. So yeah, that is um, update 23.2, I believe it was. Let me just check. So yeah, that was update yeah 23.2. On the, uh, which came out yesterday as well so um yeah there we go guys but yeah hopefully you enjoyed um today's video on new updates so not the smaller or not the biggest update of all time but yeah pretty interesting nonetheless and hopefully you learned something because i actually certainly did um with all that reading there as well so yeah let's make sure we um hit that like button let's see if we can go for uh, 30 likes for the new uh, universe sandbox 2 update guys and also subscribe if you're new helps on the journey to 11,000 subscribers and also make sure to join my discord server link in the description if you want to send me solar systems in to check out because that is the way um to do it right now for um if you want me to get them in video um, it's an exclusive discord perk i guess so um yeah if you want me to do that then make sure to join my discord and then upload your simulations in there and i can get around to doing them um at some point but yeah there we go so yeah um still um no lasers and surface grids yet they're still working on that um they mentioned in their post so you can check that out as well if you want to read more into it but yeah honestly it's good they're still working on it because we would prefer a complete version rather than a buggy version but i'm pretty sure the experimental build has been updated slightly with some bug fixes and stuff as well but yeah i won't get into that um for the time being we'll wait till the full update releases to do a video on it again so yeah that is that and yeah that's everything guys so make sure you have a great day subscribe leave a like and yeah guys i will see you in the next video goodbye